Hey, Dr. Irwin, this is Jenna Petazinski. Um, I'm doing a larynx model. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. I think you want us to do the cartilages first, so I will do that. Um, the orange pipe cleaners are the arytenoid cartilages. They are the connection point for the vocal folds, and they allow for abduction and adduction of the vocal folds, um, rock glide. They sit on top of the cartilage, cartilage which is this pink clay. Um, they do have the uh, muscle process and then the vocal process here on the inside. Um, the next one is the thyroid cartilage. This is the purple clay right here. Um, this is the primary support for the vocal folds. They do have the um, superior and inferior cornus on them and then their main function is to protect the vocal folds. Um, with this being the posterior view. The next one is the cricoid cartilage. This is the pink clay that is um, right here at the top of the trachea. They support the arytenoids, or it supports the arytenoids and the thyroid. Um, the arytenoids do sit on top of the cricoarytenoid facets. The next part is the epiglottis, which is um, here with the spoon. Um, this is responsible for protection of the airway during swallowing. Um, it is attached to the uh, anterior surface of the thyroid and it is the attachment for the airy epiglottic folds. So the green pipe cleaner are the airy epiglottic folds and on top of those are the um, cuneiform, I think that's how you say it, cartilages um, which have no function and then the cornicular cartilages sit atop of the um, arytenoids here. They also have no function. Um, the next one is the cricotracheal membrane and that connects the cricoid to the first tracheal ring right here. Uh, the next thing is the trachea which is the seafoam green color. It is the airway and um, also the pathway to the lungs. So down here you turn into your lungs and your uh, alveolar sacs and so on. Uh, the next thing is the uh, first tracheal ring. This is the connection point for the cricotracheal membrane and um, it may support the trachea along with its other rings down here that are not portrayed. Um, so now I'll go into the muscles and the bone. Um, this is the hyoid bone, the blue one here on top. Um, it suspends the larynx and supports the tongue base. The next one is the thyroarytenoid muscles, or muscle, it's the pink pipe cleaners in here. Um, it's responsible for phonation, stiffens the vocal folds, and contributes to pitch. I don't know if you need to see inferior to. Um, the next is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. This is the yellow rubber bands right here. These pull back and down on the muscle processes to uh, abduct the arytenoids or the vocal folds. The next is the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles. These are down here. These help adduct the arytenoids. They pull the vocal processes to midline. The next is the transverse arytenoid muscles. And these are the, it's a blue rubber band here in the back. Um, these pull the posterior edge of the arytenoids together during adduction. The next is the oblique uh, arytenoids. This is the red rubber band right here. They pull the posterior edge of arytenoids together as well during adduction. The next is the um, cricothyroid muscles. Um, the yellow pipe cleaners here. Now I know there's two sets, the pars recta and the pars oblique. This decreases the space between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilages to lengthen the vocal folds to increase pitch. Um, the next thing is the cricothyroid joint. This is just the regular brown rubber band right here. Um, this is just the connection point for um, the cricoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage. Okay, so I think that's all of anatomy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, aside from, the, I guess I should say the blue pipe cleaners here are the, is the nerve supply, um, the superior and recurrent uh, laryngeal nerve. Um, 
to innervate the intrinsic muscles. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go into the other four questions you had for us. I think that was the respiration, about how it uh, relates to voice. So when we inhale, we take in a lot of air. The diaphragm contracts and drops. The, uh, the diaphragm being down here. The rib cage expands to allow for air to rush into the lungs. The vocal folds adduct after the air comes into the lungs due to the negative air pressure above the lungs. I think that's uh, supra glottal pressure. Um, and then as we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and returns to resting state. Before that happens, um, the subglottic air pressure below the vocal folds here um, increases, increases and the air rushes out of the lungs and vocal folds are abducted. Excuse me, abducted, opened. Pressure in the lung returns to that of uh, the atmosphere. I'm not really sure if that's pressure is negative or positive. I think it's negative. Um, the next question you had was the necessary and sufficient um, conditions for phonation. Um, and those are phonatory, threshold, longitudinal tension, uh, adduction of the vocal folds, and then medial compression along the uh, vocal folds. Um, so the nerve supply to the intrinsic muscles, so all of these muscles that are portrayed here by the rubber bands and pipe cleaners are supplied by um, the recurrent laryngeal nerve with the exception of the, <coughs> excuse me, cricothyroid, which is supplied by um, the superior uh, laryngeal nerve. Um, the next thing is the myoelastic uh, theory of phonation. So when the uh, vocal folds are open um, by the air pressure from the lungs, um, the vocal folds will come back together. Again, um, this causes the vibration. Um, they come, the vocal folds come together during each vibration due to their elasticity and then the sudden pressure drop in between the folds as the air streams through the open glottis is what causes phonation. So the, vo the vocal folds are vibrating back and forth very, very quickly with tiny puffs of air coming out. Um, and this is what helps determine vibration of the vocal folds. Uh, well, the aerodynamic part of it helps determine the vibration of the vocal folds. Um, the increased air pressure below is what opens it. Uh, the muscle so being so elastic is what helps close the vocal folds um, so that voice can be created. Um, so all this plays a big part and all these muscles play a big part in helping us have voice and increasing and decreasing pitch um, and all that fun stuff. Um, I think the last thing that we had was the mucosal wave. That's what it was. Um, so the mucosal wave is just the wave of the vocal folds. Um, so the vocal folds, because of the air pressure, will um, have a wave-like motion. And I think it goes, uh, it appears to go from medial to lateral, and it moves inferior to superior as well with the vocal folds. Um, and this is just the vibrating of the vocal folds and uh, the pattern they take when they are vibrating. Um, I think that's all, and I realized that this is not to scale right here, but it was my innovative, uh, structure I thought of, so, um, I hope this answers all your questions, and if you have any other ones for me or need me to clarify on anything, please let me know. Thank you.